All right, so here is where I begin the actual modeling. Um, I line up my cylinders with the image, which uh, I like to keep my mesh as close to the image as possible. Um, and so I bring it forward a bit, shrink it down to match the light size of the legs. Um, I like to press Z to see the insides of my meshes just to make sure I'm selecting everything. Here I pressed E to extrude, and um, on the Z axis, by pressing Z, I extruded it straight down so I didn't get any like weird non-alignment rotation problems. Um, I think it's important to press Z when you're met, uh, editing verts just because if you don't, they can get really out of line. and Or you can forget to extrude something and it's just a giant pain. One of the things that I learned recently is that you should try to break down larger masses into smaller masses first, just because it's easier and uh, it kind of helps you visualize what you're doing. So here I extruded up on the Z axis by pressing Z, um, and then I loop cut the mesh with Control R and uh, kind of shaped it that way, which is something I've recently liked doing. Um, so now I want to see what my final image will look like, so I opened up a second window by pressing the three diagonal lines, I switched its mode to render mode, and then I uh, gave it a new material by going to the right hand side and clicking the marble shaped icon, adding a new material, and then clicking the box underneath the fuse and giving it a color. I like, oh yeah, you also have to click shadeless to get the look that you see on the left. I like to work with shadeless because it helps me really visualize the silhouette and I just think it looks really nice. Oh, here we go. Here's a mistake I made by not looking to make sure I selected all the things, all the vertices by pressing Z. Um, so just you know, be careful. I also like to delete the face on the inside of the legs just because it like feels more I don't know, like a doll, and it kind of helps me visualize where things would connect. Eh, it's just a personal preference, though. And I'm doing it again because I definitely didn't look, and I'm sure it won't be the last time that happened. Alright, so here I extrude the insides of the leg, um, and then when I go back to the wrench-shaped icon, which is your mirror of Mightifier, and then I uh, selected the box that says clipping, and when you press two of the sides together, the, it'll kind of like glue them. I'm not really sure about the actual terms for this, but it's basically like gluing them together. And I connected the center of the legs. Alright, so at this point, um, I kind of just selected all the back of the leg vertices and I pulled them up to try and uh, create what will be the pelvis and the torso eventually. Um, here's another thing I find really useful. When you select two vertices and you press Alt M, it will merge them, but you have to be careful about the order you select it in because it'll change where it goes. Um, so just keep a watch on your left side. Here I'm extruding a single vertice on the um, y-axis, and then I selected some other vertices and I created a face. That's a little tip I like to use a lot. So you know, just, just keep watching that left side and just keep be really aware of um, the shape of your silhouette because silhouette is very important in art. So when you actually want to resize the whole mesh itself, you have to go into object mode um, because in edit mode it will just kind of push the two sides together because you're really only sculpting one side at this point and the other side is kind of just a reflection. And so in object mode it kind of treats it like a whole mesh. Just kind of pushing and pulling to get the shape I want. 
And another thing is you should really always remember to keep checking from every side, which I neglected to do. As you can see, she's a little skinny in the waist and ribs. Um, so let's fix that. I kind of pushed and pulled to fix my mistake. Another thing I like to keep in mind is that you don't necessarily need to delete things to fix them. Just pushing and pulling for a while, though it's tedious, tends to fix a lot of things. And I'm a little bit OCD about where my verts are, and I like to keep them in line and keep them tidy because it just helps a lot when you are rigging later and if you it, uh, the way the light interacts with it will be strange if it's not clean. Yeah, it takes about 85% of my time at the end of the day, but you know what? It's kind of relaxing. So, like, sort of. Um, here I just selected the uh, entire loop cut and I pressed G twice to move the, uh, the loop up and down without changing everything. Just scaling it down again to kind of match up with the model. Taking some creative liberties for my own art, <laughs> I guess. He lost some weight in ribs again, so I gotta keep changing it. Um, here I am trying to keep it tidy and just I'm deleting some of the vertices I don't think I need because honestly it just kind of clutters the mesh and with low poly less is always more in my opinion. So if you can delete vertices and it still it and it still looks good, then you're all the better for it. Um, another like design tip is when you're modeling a me like just in art and modeling in general, the ribs kind of tilt backwards and the pelvis tilts forward to keep the body in balance and uh, you should never really have straight lines in a human body or in most or organic forms because it seems unnatural. So I gave her ribs a little back tilt. Cleaning up a bit more. Um, just kind of pushing and pulling to make sure all the shapes are right. A lot of this experience just comes from studying the human form and even studying cartoons, you know. Um, I like to ex uh, to scale on certain axes, like right here, I sort of, well, I extrude on the Y just to like thicken it, excuse me, I scaled on the Y just to thicken it a bit in a certain direction, and then I realize at this point she's very, very tall, so I shrink her down a bit. I'm like the world's fastest plastic surgeon or something. She's a little bit lumpy, so a little bit more vert finessing is needed here. Another problem with having too many vertices I found is that it can kind of make your mesh look lumpy on the sides. Um, which is why I really do try my best to keep it as clean as possible. Less is always more in art, I've come to find. Another thing is that when you are um, adding a neck to the mesh, it's good to tilt it 
sort of in a diagonal uh, because that's just another you know, human body thing or you shouldn't have straight lines if you can help it. Um, here is where I began adding the arm, which I had a little bit of trouble with, but I eventually got it. I moved it up, so if you see those two polygons on the top, or those two rows of polygons, those will become the shoulders. Right here I use the knife tool with K to cut out a slot for where the arm will go. And I just kind of am moving things around to match the shape of what I want the arm to be. Uh, yeah, so these up here will become the shoulders, so just be careful about the shape. Um, you, uh, usually with like cartoony or cute characters or most low poly illustrations, you'll want like smaller shoulders because it, I don't know, it just looks cuter from a design standpoint. The same is true for the reverse. If you like want a really heavy set or masculine character, really large shoulders is good. Alright, so here I uh, selected all of the vertices around the armhole <clears throat> and extruded. Right here I tried to do a thing where I merged all the vertices into the armpit because I thought it might like look better, but I find out in the, like later that it doesn't really work. Regardless, this still is a good uh, process to make arms. Just make sure that everything looks pretty tidy before you extrude the arms because um, later it will matter. Always try and make things look good before you add extra parts because you'll have to go back and fix them and it becomes super tedious the more vertices you have. Um, at this point I'm saving for the first time which is a rookie mistake. You guys should really sh save like at the beginning and like every 20 seconds even like just trust me, I've lost so many models and so much art just by not saving, so do yourself a favor. <clears throat> Alright, so here's where I actually start extruding the arm, and then the problem I run into is I don't really have enough space in the armpit area to bend the arms naturally, and while this isn't always a problem, if you want to rig this model for animation later, be very aware of the way the arm bends because it won't look realistic if you don't have um, space there. So I gave it a little bit of space and I tried to clean it up a bit. Um, I sped up this part of the video because it, I basically, it's just a lot of vert pushing and a lot of weirdness that I had to fix. Alright, so I just kind of moved it over a little bit to give it some space, give it some breathing room. <clears throat> Arms usually look really funny for me before I actually start sculpting things. Alright, so um, at this point, <clears throat> I decide that you kind of have to decide. I like to work in a way that I have the entire model mirrored completely before I make any changes, and so I decided to go with the harder side of the arm, which is her holding her arm up. Um, just because, I don't know, I like to start with the harder thing first, personal preference. Um, I kind of struggled making the arm bend because I've never actually done a pose where her arm is up like this. So you see me finagling with the vertices for a long time, but I eventually get it. Just try and make sure that the uh, mesh stays round and keep pushing and pulling on vertices. And eventually you'll get it. Um, right here I added a cut to the top of the arm because I wanted it to have more of a round shape when I extruded it. Her arm looks like a pipe right now. I added um, another loop cut so that I could have it bend more realistically. And I can give her a little elbow. 